It's Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary. I wanted to do a vlog style video for this Serpente Sunday, April 17th, 2022. It's 10 p.m. or 2200 hours Mountain Standard Time out here in Colorado in the United States. And I just wanted to take you around and show you what some of the snakes are doing as they're starting to wake up for the night. And this is just about when my night gets started. I just got off the phone with a client. It was actually a video call where we did a live training session over Zoom. I do that with some of my clients and then other clients that I have on Patreon, we message or we chat by phone or text about their snake training or other animal training and behavior questions and issues, but I love doing live video training sessions with my clients. So I just finished one that went really, really well and Ashley, if you're watching this, I'm talking about you and your fabulous snake, Monty. So let's just go around and see what some of the snakes are doing as they're starting to wake up for our night. Let's get started with one of my Morelia Bradley. This is Bennu, and he is my oldest Morelia Bradley at almost eight years old. Look at that. I think he wants to eat tonight. Over here, I have more Morelia Bradley, and this one is Triangula. She's one of my star students. She looks like she wants to eat. This is her clutch mate, Laurel, who also looks like she wouldn't mind coming out and eating. And this is one of my favorite Morelia Bradley because she is gorgeous. This is Katesh. She's about a year and a half old, and she is a Brettles Python that was produced by Ralph Polinski at Midwest Serpentarium. She is a 50% hypomelanistic stonewashed Morelia Bradley, and she is absolutely gorgeous. She's a really good student, and I really like her a lot. She's in a black box cages enclosure that's five by two by two. She's been in that since she was a little baby. This is Tanavik, obviously in ambush position, ready to eat, and been rubbing against his plexiglass because it's filthy. This is actually a sad part of the Serpente Sunday video. This is Ronan's enclosure, and I've just been leaving it open. He had surgery on March 18th for cancer, and unfortunately, he has an extremely aggressive form of cancer. He has lymphoma, and he was given one to 20 months to live. He had four inches of his intestines removed, and he got sent home and I'm just letting him do absolutely whatever he wants for the time being. And he already spent 80% of his time out of his enclosure as it was. And so now since the cancer diagnosis, I just haven't been closing his habitat at all. I just leave it open 24 seven. I let him do what he wants. But unfortunately, most of the time he's doing just what you see here. He's up in one of his trees or he's in his humid hide and he's not doing very much moving around. Sabine is squished between her substrate shield <laughs> and the door of her Zen habitat. And she has discovered lately that she likes to do this. When I first found her like this about a week ago, I just thought she was getting too hot because her um, heating and lighting is in the top of her enclosure. And this would be the furthest possible point that she could get away from it. But I did a little experiment and I did not even turn that on the last two days. And she's still been coming down out of her hide and squishing herself between the substrate barrier and her door. I think she just likes the feeling. It's called thigmotaxis, and it's where animals like to feel that they can touch things on all sides of their body, and it makes them feel secure. This is Ben Du, one of my Morelia Bradley, who never, ever gets in his cork bark. He is always on top of his cork bark when he uses it. This is Balana, who just literally ate two nights ago. So she is not eating tonight, but she thinks that she would like to eat again. Too bad. 
Here's what some of our royals are doing. This is Kenobi, who's out and about in an ambush position. Hi there, buddy. I'll have to check your card, and I see that you're exhibiting some hunting behavior, but I'm not sure that you need to eat tonight, so I'll have to look that up and see if there's been enough time in between this potential feed tonight and when you ate last, but you're very pretty. This is Rassilon. He is one of my corn snakes, and he actually just ate two nights ago. It was one of the biggest meals I've ever given him, so if he thinks that he's going to eat again right now, he is sorely mistaken. Sorry, I'm just taking some video of you. Yeah, you don't need to eat again. You guys will like this. Here's where I store the feeding tongs and the training targets. And look who's down there. That's TC. TC has been out for a couple of days. And last night he spent all night on the kitchen sink. And today he spent all day on the scale. And now I find him inside the bucket where the training targets are. And he ate two nights ago as well. And he had a pretty big meal. So you're not getting anything and I don't care how long you sit by that target. Silly boy. This is Pavlova. She's another one of our royals. And she looks like she would like to eat. I'm not prepared to feed anybody right now. It's just shortly after 2200 or 10 p.m. And everybody's just kind of starting to wake up. So I don't have any food prepared yet. I think it's been 10 or 12 days since you ate. So it's possible that I might feed you later. Here's a rare sight of part of one of our Brazilian rainbow boas. This is Kilgara, our only male Brazilian rainbow boa. He obviously was out and now he's going inside his humid hide. But we don't see our rainbow boas very often, so you guys get a really cool glimpse of him. Very pretty. I wish that they were more bold and outgoing and visible more because they're gorgeous snakes, but they're, they hide a lot and they're pretty shy. Now this is one of my Colombian rainbow boas and I actually really like them. They are more bold and outgoing and they're just not as shy as the Brazilian ones. They're kind of a brown snake and this one's name is Sola. And I like her, she's smart, she's engaging. She's actually out a lot. She's not as active as a python, but it's cool that I get to see her. And you can't really tell, she has similar markings to the Brazilian rainbow boa, but because all of the colors are just shades of brown and tan, uh, the markings aren't as visible as on the red, but I actually like the Colombian rainbow boas better. Okay. I know that you just ate like less than a week ago, so no food, sorry. Everybody wants to eat tonight. Is it the weather or what? And this is amazing. This is the shyest, most fearful snake that we have in our family. This is Mesmer. He's a Python Regis, and he has really started to come around in the last few weeks, and I'm just thrilled. Look at this. He's pressed against his door, just chilling on his water. This is a three by two by 18 inch enclosure. And weeks and weeks go by and all I ever see is the tip of his nose sticking out of his hide. And really his whole life has been like that. He's two years old. And just recently, literally like the last month, he has been targeting all the way out of hiding to his door. He's been eating right there on that rock where he's got his tail. And look at him tonight, he is totally out. And he's not freaking out that I'm this close. He used to, if I did happen to catch him out by accident drinking or something, he would fly back into his hide so fast that it made a lot of noise and he just looked like a blur. But look at this, I'm here taking video. And he's just, I mean, maybe he's frozen because he's worried about me being here, but at least he's not darting back into his hide. And I'm just thrilled to see him out and kind of stretched out and by his door. Very, very good, Mesmer. And you're so beautiful. You need to be out more. 005 just shed earlier this evening. 
He's our coastal carpet python. And oh yeah, he's like, I just shed, I'm hungry, do you have food for me? I don't right now, sorry. But it looks like that you need more water, you need me to get that shed out. It looks like you might need your humid hide refreshed. And obviously you would like to eat. I'll think about it, it's early yet. Yeah, you're so beautiful. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Merlin. What are you doing? I would say this is a clue that Merlin wants out. Hey, I don't think that's a good idea to put your nose in there. I'm gonna have to fix that. No, that didn't look good. I mean, obviously he can't fit through there, but he did have his nose squished there. Here's Salea. <laughs> clearly ready to eat. Boy, everybody wants to eat tonight. Everybody's hungry. And you know, it's still so early. It's not even 11 p.m. So I sometimes am up till three, four in the morning training snakes and feeding snakes. So some of these guys may yet get to eat tonight. This is a striped Brettles python. We had three. One of them, the clutch mate to this one died on Thanksgiving last year. And neither one have ever been quite right. They've behaved differently than all of our other Brettles pythons. They were slower to grow to size and they both had a slight wobble or tremble when they moved and climbed. Now he's gotten so much better and I'm not seeing any kind of trembling or wobbling now. They used to do it when they would do behaviors like this and he's gotten more confident and bold. His brother always wobbled and had a slight vibration when he would move, almost neurologic looking, and he never was quite right. He didn't behave like a normal Brettles python. He was super shy. He, he came out of his enclosure like maybe one time the whole time that we had him, and he died unexpectedly like the night before Thanksgiving, and then we weren't able to get a necropsy done for like five days because of the holiday and we weren't able to find out the cause of death because you know the body was just too decomposed by then so i'm not sure what happened very sad these snakes are not that old um this is stamets and he's only going on four years old this year so his brother Lorca was very very young to die suddenly i'm not I swear I just fed you not too long ago. So I'm really super thrilled that you're sticking your head out and everything and you're being very confident and bold. I might have to feed you to reinforce this behavior, but I don't have anything ready right now. I'll just leave your door open for a bit. How about that? And this is TC's empty enclosure because TC is in the training bucket instead of in his enclosure. Boreth, one of our big older Brettles pythons, when he's out exploring, likes to spend some time in TC's enclosure if it's empty. And two nights ago, TC was out roaming. Boreth went in TC's enclosure and he stayed in there moving around for hours and hours. And then TC didn't want to go back in it. And so TC's been out for a couple of days. And I don't know if Boreth scent marked it or what he did, but I may have to clean it out before TC's comfortable going back into his home. Here's Radic, our Angolan Python, just chilling out on his ledge. He just shed. He only hides when he's going through an ecdesis cycle. And the entire rest of the time, he is up high on one of these ledges, or he's down here sitting on this rock, or this rock or on his water. The snake literally never hides except when he's going to shed. So he's a pretty cool snake to have. He's very mellow, very mellow and easy to handle and comes out on his own usually later at night than what it is now. And, and he's just visible most of the time. So really cool. This is Moondor, one of our carpet pythons. He's a pop one carpet python. He's pretty active. 
I mean, not just right now, he's active in general. <laughs> and then we have another carpet python up here. This is a Darwin carpet python. This is Jayla. Darwins I have found tend to be long and skinny, very, very long and skinny. And the poplin carpet pythons tend to be not as long, but thicker. This is Ezra, one of my Python Regis. This was his original quarantine enclosure, and then I decorated it to be his little baby enclosure. And um, people questioned why he was still in this small terrarium when he was a few months old, and it's because he feels comfortable in it. What I've done is put his terrarium in a four by two by two enclosure, and I just leave the door open. He does come out. Yes, I have seen him out and I've seen him using the rest of the space in his enclosure, but he always goes back to his terrarium, which is his home base. And he just hasn't wanted to give it up yet. Have you, Ezra? You're so pretty. This is our rough scale python. He always is ready to eat. He may strike at the camera if he thinks that I'm targeting him. He's another snake that's really long and thin. He learned target training very, very quickly. I mean, after one session, he already figured out that the presence of the target meant that food was coming. I don't have the target with me, but this phone sometimes confuses some of the snakes and they think, well, maybe it's a target. It's not, he's learning. He came from Ralph Polinsky at Midwest Serpentarium as well. This is Buffy. She's the snake that Ben Morell and his partner at Reptile Genetic Services worked with me on. They did some temperament stuff with her and some preliminary training and environmental stimulation before she arrived here. I think she's very pretty. She is a pinstripe. Yes, she is a orange dream pinstripe. And she's pretty smart. Except that she hasn't figured out she's in an enclosure that has front opening doors. She always expects the roof to come off. And she did live in a tub before, so maybe that's why. When she comes out, she comes out the top. And when I feed her, I feed her from the top. I just take the screen off and she does just fine with that. But eventually I would like her to learn that the front door is open so I don't keep having to take the screen top off. Good girl, Buffy. You're very pretty. I really like the pinstripe uh, pattern in the Royal Pythons. And both of my pinstripes are pretty confident and outgoing and smart. And I get to see them a lot. I like snakes that I can see a lot. Now this is my other pinstripe, Barkley. <laughs> You're just waking up too? Everybody thinks I'm feeding them. I'm not feeding you. You don't see a target, you're not getting fed. Now this is a normal pinstripe. So he's really pretty too. I really like the pinstripe. He's just not as yellow gold as Buffy. I guess that's the orange dream. I see you. I, I really don't think, you guys are wanting food too soon. I just don't think you guys need to be eating this close together, but I'll check your card and if it's okay for you guys to eat, since you're showing me some active hunting behavior, I'll think about thawing out some food tonight. Good boy, Barkley. Wow, I've got a bunch of royals that are up earlier than normal and at their doors. This is Ahsoka. She's a black pastel and she's got that really cool white patch around part of her body that's called a ringer. Ahsoka, now I know for a fact that I didn't feed you. I fed you like nine days ago. I don't think you need to eat again tonight, maybe in a couple of days. I don't know though. 
When I do behavior-based feeding, if they're really, really intent on eating, even if it hasn't been too long, I sometimes still will feed them again. And usually when they're this intent, like trying to get out and exhibiting hunting behavior, they eat their food. This is another one of my carpet pythons. This is Sokozu. She also looks like she would like to eat. I guess I know what I'm doing the rest of the night. I guess I'm feeding snakes and training snakes. I'll probably have a lot of footage I can use for Training Tuesday videos after tonight. Here's another empty enclosure. <laughs> it belongs to Boba Fett. And that is because Boba Fett, one of my royal pythons, he's from Bad Reptiles and he is an active boy. I just love this snake. He woke up before it was even dark outside and he wanted out and I couldn't watch him because I was doing things with dogs and horses. And so I put him in this exercise tent and that was several hours ago because it's close to 11 p.m. now. And he's still in here roaming around and looking active and alert. And I did feed him 10 days ago. So I may feed him again. He shed right before that. Hey, oh, no, Galaxy. We don't do that when the snake's in the exercise pen. Uh-uh. Well, alrighty then, we're done. I went through a lot of snakes. It's been almost an hour since I started you on this tour and I'm probably going to have to cut some of it out because this video can't be an hour long. And also I got interrupted by Galaxy, our new smooth collie puppy. And so I'm going to let you go and I'll see you next weekend for another episode of Serpente Sunday. And until then, everybody, please remember to always be kind and love your animals. Right?